welcome to the International Gaming Standard Association's Conversations. The IGSA Conversations are just that. They are conversations between various gaming industry professionals discussing a specific topic, and they're intended to be informative and to generate questions. I'm Peter Darat, IGSA's president, and today we have with us Mark Pace, Managing Director of GSA Europe. Today we will continue our, our conversation, one of GSA standards, which can be of significant value to supplier, and that is the Game 2 system or G2S standards. So let's, be, let's discuss today what is G2S certification. Note that GSA will also be hosting a one-hour Zoom session with Q&A on how G2S can boost product sales for suppliers. So let's talk about what is G2S certification. Hey, Mark. In the last conversation, we talked about the certification and validation tool or CVT, but we focused on the validation piece of its functionality. Today, I'd like to discuss the certification piece. Sure. So perhaps we can start by defining what certification is. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Peter, because most people hear certification and they translate that as meaning regulatory approval. Yeah, but that's not what it is, right? Well, right, and, and maybe to avoid confusion as we go through this conversation, I'll, I'll use two different terms. Uh, approval means the successful result of testing required by <coughs> before a gaming product can be sold in the industry. And certification means the, the successful result of testing to ensure that a technical protocol like G2S has in fact been implemented according to the specification. Okay, that's a mouthful, but so I, I do understand you correctly then that a product must be both certified and approved? Uh, this is where it gets a bit complicated. Now, the, the right answer is yes, a product should be certified if it is to be approved, but that's rarely the case. So why is that, Mark? Well, because the testing that's done to approve a product is focused on making sure the product meets the regulatory and legal requirements in a jurisdiction. A technical specification may be incorrectly implemented, but the product may still meet those jurisdictional requirements. So in that case, the product would still be approved. But that may have a significant negative impact on the interoperability of that product. Without a doubt, but that's a market issue, not a regulatory issue. Okay, okay, I understand. So where does certification fit into all of this? It fits in at the market level, right? I mean, operators buying products should require that they be tested to ensure that the newly purchased items interoperate on the casino floor. Certification is really the only way they can be assured that the products will work together before actually plugging them in. I mean, it's, it's not good enough to say, you know, the outcome is okay, the process has to be correct as well. That yeah, reminds me of my old algebra class. You, you had to show your work, not just come up with the correct answer. <laughs> that, that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> but, 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 but the reason for this, right, is, is interoperability. Uh, it's, it's a big word. Um, the, the reason a specification is created and published is so that really every implementation of that protocol follows that spec. I mean, look, you, you might remember this when I was at Harris Entertainment before they became Caesars. We, we created an interoperability lab at our headquarters in Vegas. We were so fed up with products not, not interoperating. Uh oh, and, and keep in mind, this was back in the days using SAS, right? Um, that we decided it was, it was better to just test things out in our own lab than on the casino floor. So interoperability is actually very important. Yeah, by the way, I do remember that lab very well, Mark. Okay, so certification is testing that proves uh, the tech, that the technical protocols were implemented correctly by the product supplier. Right, now, how the certification testing is done is also quite important. How so, Mark? Well, so, <laughs> Uh, let's, let's say you want to buy a product. Um, one is certified by ISO, the other is certified by Joe's lab. Which one would you be most, most willing to buy? Well, the one that's certified by the International Organization for Standards, of course. <laughs> and why is that? Well, I, I, I usually get to ask the questions, but okay, because ISO is well known, independent and publishes the criteria for standards that, that are transparent. Bingo. And, and so you want a product that's been certified following a testing process uh, cr that's created by a knowledgeable, independent, transparent organization. Yes, yes. And that's exactly what GSA has done in, in when we created the certification and validation tool. Okay, I see what you mean. 
The test scripts used to validate that the G2S specification was implemented properly. They were vetted by the Certification Interoperability Committee within GSA. The CIC, the committee, which was comprised of test engineers from multiple GSA members and companies, represents that independence and transparency. Uh, right. Now, uh, the CVT is available to, to anyone implementing G2S and, and to, to the industry and regulatory test labs who obviously test products for jurisdictional approval. So, so in essence, uh, a supplier can run their product through the CVT, verify that they adhere to the spec, and then they can be assured that when they submit the, their product for certification, it will pass because it's the same tool and the same scripts that will be used. And it also means that operators and regulators can bank on the validity of that certification because just like with ISO, the standard and the testings were created by GSA. That's exactly right. Okay, but you said that regulators focus on approval and not certification. So wh why get a product certified? Isn't that a waste of time and money? Well, I mean, th that kind of goes back to the comment I made about the marketplace and interoperability. Right. If, if an operator wants to buy a product that uses any protocol, they, they should really buy a certified one. I mean, with G2S, GSA has developed a tool that can tell the buyer, in this case, the operator, that the product uses G2S correctly. By the way, we're going to be creating a similar testing tool for the online gaming third-party interface standard. That's another GSA communication protocol that connects gaming content systems with online platforms. That's uh, that's great, but I still can't help but think that regulators should want products to be certified as well. Well, I, I think that will happen sort of organically, right? I mean, as, as has been discussed in other conversations, regulators can also get a lot of value from the use of G2S. So, so when they start to use G2S-based products, I believe that wanting to make sure that the protocol was implemented correctly will, will be a natural ask. And, and again, since the CVT is available to all those wanting to implement and test G2S, the certification process should be, in, in essence, you know, fast and simple. Okay, which leads me to the next question, Mark. So what is the certification process? Can you explain? Sure. And, and again, simple is the operative word. We've tried to make it as, as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. so, so the process is to have the, the product certified during the lab submission. We, we didn't want to have you know, multiple submissions. So if a lab doesn't have the CVT, then they can get it from Radical Blue. Uh, the CVT generates a report of the tests conducted and their outcome. Uh, if the product passes, then the lab sends that document to GSA uh, and Ethan Tower, our technical director, reviews it for completeness. If it's all good, then GSA issues a certification. Well, that sounds uh, simple, as, uh, like you said. Since the supplier should be running the CVT to verify their product anyway, the certification process is uh, sort of a built-in. And that was the idea, right? Okay, awesome, Mark. Uh, okay, let me try and summarize what we talked about today. Um, G2S certification means testing to ensure that the G2S protocol was implemented in accordance to the GSA-created specification. It does not mean the approval that game products must receive to, to prove they meet jurisdictional requirements, right? Um, g 2 certification is also important because it tells operators that a product is interoperable with other certified products, which prevents all kinds of potential issues. Um, the GSS certification and validation tool, or CVT, uses test script approved by the committee, the certification and probability committee of GSA, which means they are independent, transparent, and can be trusted to accurately test adherence to the specification. Right. And the certification pr process is, as you just explained, Mark, very uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, testing can be done by labs or by the suppliers themselves. And a product is certified by GSA after the CVT test results document is reviewed for completeness. Did I miss anything? Um, no, I think the, the only thing I would add is, is that the regulators will also see benefits from certification, not just the operators. That's a good point, Mark. Thank you. But it's great to know that certification is available for G2S and will also be available for other standards like the online gaming standard TPI. So for our audience, thank you for listening. Please send us your questions and comments by contacting us. And information on doing so can be found on our website, itsa.org. Until the next conversation, thank you. <laughs>